Max Lakato here sending out prayers and encouragement to you wherever you are and however you're feeling today. May the Lord lift your spirit. I'm actually in our church building. I'm in one of the wings and sitting in front of a baptistry. Yeah, from my perspective, our church has been a little quiet lately. I'm ready for it to be noisy again, as I know many people are. I'm ready for the waters of this baptistry to flow and for the saints to come and celebrate. But in the right time, in the right way, that's going to happen. And my point is today has nothing to do really with when and where and how we should be gathering in church buildings. My point is, well, even though our church buildings are quiet, the Holy Spirit is not. The Holy Spirit is active. The Holy Spirit is working all over the world. And as we this weekend celebrate Pentecost Sunday, do you not think it appropriate to turn our attention back to that wonderful time in which the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the followers in the upper room? I've got my Bible open to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And we're going to It'll be kind of a quick run through it. Oh boy, I wish we had 30 minutes, but maybe seven or eight will do just to give us a, a healthy reminder. If you want to hang around, please do. If you don't understand, God bless you and let's, let us know how to pray for you. You see, Jesus had told the followers to wait here to receive the promise from the Father, which I told you about. That John baptized people with water, but in a few days, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's the promise Jesus gave his followers in Acts chapter one and verse four, and they obeyed it. 120 of them gathered, and Jesus sent them to Jerusalem to wait, and they waited. They did what they were told. They did not know for how long they would wait. Would it be a day? Would it be a decade? Nor did they know exactly on what they were waiting, the, the, waiting for the power of the Holy Spirit, for sure. But in what form? In what way? Could they have imagined what would happen? Acts, uh, Acts chapter 2 in verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Now, Pentecost was one of the three feast days on which Jewish men were required to appear in Jerusalem at least once in their lifetime. Many, no doubt, had arrived over 50 days earlier and participated in the very significant Passover celebration. They came from all over the world. Uh, they came from every corner of the then known societies. A dozen dialects echoed in the markets and coins from every currency jingled in the purses of the merchants. The city of David hummed with activity. The divine timing was precise. Everything was ready. Everything had led to this moment. Now with the sacrifice of Christ accomplished, now with the tomb of Christ vacated, now with the person of Christ ascended into heaven's throne, and now with the apostles gathered as commanded in one place, in one accord, in prayer, awaiting the power of the Holy Spirit. Now with representatives from at least 15 nations gathered in one city, it was time. It was time. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. That's Acts chapter 2, verses 2 through 6. My goodness, what an amazing description. What a powerful moment and what a event in an event in history that is worthy of our consideration and for which we're asking God to repeat. Scripture says the Spirit came suddenly and from heaven. So there's no question as to the source and the surprise of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit came where they were sitting, where they were sitting. It's maybe a subtle reminder of the Spirit as a gift Luke could have said where they were praying or where they were interceding or where they were worshiping or where they were calling out to God. But 
the emphasis is, is less on the activity of the saint and more on the sovereign spirit. And he came in such a fashion in what seemed to be tongues of fire descended and came to rest on each one of them. And then verse 4 says, all of them, all of them, without exception, were filled. And because of the Holy Spirit, each one of them could speak with such a fluency and in such a power that people from all over the world heard the story of Jesus, verse 6, in their own language. Oh, oh my goodness. Can you imagine this moment? Andrew declaring the goodness of God in the tongue of the Egyptians or, or Thomas recounting the miracles that he had witnessed at the hand of Jesus Christ in the dialect of Cappadocia. Or what about Mary, the mother of Jesus, describing the birth of Jesus to a group from Crete in the language of their land? The work of the Tower of Babel was for a moment reversed. Now, some bystanders were, were cynical. They accused the disciples of early morning inebriation in need of a breathalyzer. <laughs> but others were amazed. And boy, did they ask the right question. In verse 12, they said, Whatever could this mean? Whatever could this mean? Crowded city, prayerful followers, rushing wind, falling fire, 15 nations represented in, in one locale, one assembly, disciples speaking like trained translators of the United Nations. How would you answer that question? Whatever could this mean? At least this Compelling communication was the first fruit of the Holy Spirit. He empowered and He empowers Christ's followers to declare the wonders of God in the heart languages of the world. Now in time, the Spirit would do so much more. Empower the first followers to heal the sick. He, he would direct them on the way to lead the church. In time, they would on occasion even raise the dead and pray open prison doors. But before, before all those mighty acts of power, these were mighty, there were mighty words of proclamation. Acts 4.13 calls these followers unschooled, ordinary men and women. And they were suddenly able to speak in languages they had never studied and impact nations they had never visited. And fire fell from heaven and melted the ice from about 3,000 hearts. See that in Acts 2.41. I don't think God's will has changed for His church. I don't. I think what Jesus said to His followers, He says to us. He told them, don't be anxious about what you're to speak or what you're to say, for you are to say what will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak. It is the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Matthew chapter 10, verses 19 and 20. And then this promise that Jesus gave to the followers. He never rescinded it. He said, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power to testify, to testify about me with great effect. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. My friend, my friend, on my heart is this prayer that another Pentecost would happen. And that this pandemic would lead to a great harvest. And that these days of survival would usher in a season of revival. May that happen. And as that happens, God will use you, child of God. You, son, daughter of God. He will use you to declare the wonders of God in the heart languages of the world. He may send you around the planet. He may send you down the street. He may call on you to call on a friend. He may urge you to send a text to a, a relative. I don't know. But what I do know is this. If he prompts you to, to speak, that means he is speaking through you. And you can speak with confidence. You can speak with confidence. And in this coming world revival, in this coming world revival, He's going to commission missionaries to go all over the world to all neighborhoods, to all cultures, because He loves all people. And He loves you. He loves you. we got folks from all over the world 
watching this simple little message. Would you tell us where you're from? Because I'm going to do my best before I pillow my head today to pray for every nation that gets mentioned. Oh, I'd love to pray for your country. Give us the name of the city. Give us the country. Just let us pray for you. And let's pray for another Pentecost to happen this Pentecost. Amen.